Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 429, Blessed Be the Lord, number 429. Please rise.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And good morning. We gather on this lovely Mother's Day morning, and at the conclusion of our Mass, we will have a special blessing for all mothers in attendance here today to also recognize and acknowledge and bless our high school graduates of this year who are here in this special Mass. We're grateful for all the achievements that you've made throughout your young lives, and we ask that God continue to bless and help you that you may realize your hopes and dreams for the future. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we hear in the Gospel Jesus reassuring his followers that he will be with them always, that he and the Father are one, and that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We first heard the voice of Jesus the Good Shepherd leading us to his Father's kingdom in the sacrament of baptism. And so now we call to mind our baptism in the rite of sprinkling. God of all grace, number 316, verse 4b.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. But let us be seated now to hear God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, be cho- but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whomever whomever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They will stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, for that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, I have been with you for so long a time, and you still don't know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. In the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, also have faith in me. You know, those words were addressed to the early Christian community, to the disciples, 
to give them encouragement because they knew, Jesus knew that they were going to face difficulties. They were going to face challenges if they were going to follow the way that, they, that Jesus had showed them, showed them. That's much like a farewell address that he gives to them. Much like sometimes the farewell addresses that these high school seniors will be listening to, perhaps next week or during the week, getting advice. Because we do that because they're going to be, lose, they're going to be leaving the security as such of the high school and now they're going to be on their, on their own. And they're going to be facing challenges. They're going to be facing difficulties. They're going, to fight. they're going to have joys too. But that's the way life is. You know, the early disciples in the early church faced challenges pretty much right away. In the uh, first reading from Acts, we get a little glimpse of what the early Christian community was like. It was growing. It was progressing. And the 12 needed help. There were some people that were being neglected. And so what they did was they appointed seven men to help. They were actually servants. And the word that they used was diaconeia, which really means a deacon. So when they laid hands on these seven, they were the first deacons. Well, if you read the next chapter, chapter 7, you will see what happened to Stephen, the first deacon. He was out proclaiming the word of God. He was out telling people how Jesus was the fulfillment of the gospel. He was the fulfillment of all the promises that had been made, those promises so long ago. There were some people that didn't like that. They caused an uproar with the people, with, the congr with, with all the people in the city, and they threw him out. And they stoned him. They killed him. He was the first martyr of the church. Now, you know, uh, Jim, Deacon Jim and I, which probably should watch ourselves because the first deacon of the church also was the first martyr. Perhaps we should watch our backs a little bit. The first community had a challenge. But they trusted in the words of Jesus that gave them that promise. What about today? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwellings, places. That gospel from uh, John's gospel is used many times for a funeral liturgy because it gives not only God's promise, Jesus' promise to us, but it also gives hope to us. And so it's kind of a, it's a good, it's a good reading to use that. Maybe you haven't experienced that too much, you high school seniors, but that's what we use sometimes. Promises are so very important. You know, one of the promises that uh, we make as married couples is promise to live together in union for a lifetime as we take our jobs, as we move on from here, you high school seniors, whatever you do, if you go to school, if you go to the service, if you stay home, whatever you do, hopefully you'll make a promise to do well in that. We keep our promises. We try to do that. Well, Jesus has made a promise with us to be with us. And we, in turn, return that promise, return that promise to God. And one of the things we did this morning uh, was have the rite of sprinkling that we go around and when we bless ourselves as the water hits us, it reminds us of our baptism. On Easter, each one of us um, said yes to our baptismal promises. Do you remember what there were? Some of those promises? To reject Satan and all his works? to reject the lure of evil, to reject Satan and his empty promises. We all said, yes. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven 
and Jesus and the Holy Spirit? We said, yes, we believe in that. We believe in that promises. We make those promises, but, you know, sometimes it's very hard to keep those promises. Sometimes we fail. And I think one of the reasons we fail is because the devil is around planting little seeds of temptation in our lives. The devil's pretty clever. He knows exactly our weaknesses, exactly the places that perhaps we're more susceptible, and he really capitalizes on those. I'll give you a little witness of uh, one of my temptations. This is not a general confession, but something about that. You know, one of the things that I get angry about, gets very disturbed about, when I see uh, injustices happening in the world, I see the poor being taken advantage of, I see the weak being abused, I see discrimination happening all over. That makes me angry. I hear lies. I hear denials. I hear that people are bullying other people, not only children, but adults as well, and insults. That makes me angry. And a little voice inside my head, I think it's the devil, says, get even with those people. Get angry with those people. Retaliate with those people because they're doing something wrong. That's the little voice of the devil saying that. But you know, in my saner moments, I remember some of the words that were in that second reading from St. Peter. Because we are Christians, we are called to do better. We are a chosen people, a holy nation, we read. We have been called out of darkness into God's wonderful light. We are called to more. We are called to a higher standard. Not to be better than other people and lorded over people, but rather to be God's chosen people. We have received the promises of Jesus, and we are called to keep those promises that we made in our baptism. We are called not to spread anger, but rather to spread mercy, to spread peace, to spread love. Pope Francis does that by his daily life. I don't know whether you're keeping any track of, of what he's up to, but he's really making a witness to the whole world, not just to Catholics, but to, to the whole world. But that is why we gather, because it's difficult sometimes to keep all of our promises but we come together on our masses, on our weekend masses, and a little advertising. I hope you high school seniors continue to go to mass. We come to be strengthened. We come to get God's word in our lives. We come to receive Jesus, to help us to face our difficulties in life. Jesus truly is the way and the truth and the life. May we always remember Jesus' promise. Do not let your health be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. And it takes courage. As I saw a little sign on one of the motor boards. <laughs> Have courage. Have courage. And be kind to one another. And you know, we are surrounded today with a bunch of people who have really kept their promises, and that's our mothers. You know, our mothers implied yes when they kept us in the womb for nine months and bore us. Every one of our mothers has, has given us nursing as we go along, you know, to keep us, keep us healthy, to keep us going the right direction. Many times our mothers um, maybe get on us a little bit. That might happen, but that's good. That's good. They're challenging us. 
And so today, if your mother is here, thank her today. If your mother is in heaven, thank her today. And so I say, happy Mother's Day to all your mothers here and there. Let us now stand and offer our prayers and needs this day. We pray to God our Father for all the graces for both the church and the world through Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. For the church throughout the world, that she may always be faithful to Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Pates, Father John, and all priests, that they will be enlightened by the Holy Spirit as they proclaim the gospel message that Jesus is the way to salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our government leaders, that they will witness honesty and truth in fulfilling their oaths of office and performing their duties for our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For mothers everywhere, may the Lord bless them in their vocation, and especially for our mothers who have died, that they are resting peacefully with the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. On Tuesday, we celebrate the Feast of St. Isidore. We pray for farmers and all those involved in agriculture. And we ask St. Isidore to intercede for us that we might see a bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the parents of our graduating class and all parents, that they will always serve as an inspiration and model to their children, showing them that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the graduating class of 2017 and all students who are moving into the next phase of their lives, that we will continue to seek the Lord and to live out our faiths as we enter the world of, world of college or wherever our path leads us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Bob and Marge Kramer and Terry Bloom, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Mary Schwinderman of our parish and Delbert Ruschenberg, father of Joe Ruschenberg of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions in our prayer basket, for all those who are sick, for parishioners in the military and our own petitions we now express in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we pray the prayer for vocations found on the back of our missalettes. O oh Jesus, good and gentle shepherd, grant that the men and women from our community may have the grace and the courage to hear and answer your call to priesthood and religious life. Give them the wisdom to realize that life is a gift let them realize their life is part of your plan. Call forth those you have chosen to spread the gospel message and help them to freely respond to the life of service in the church. May the parents and families of our parish support and encourage our young men and women to search for, follow, and answer the call of God in their lives. Amen. And let us be seated now for the preparation of gifts. Please join us in your offertory hymn, number 376.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people, your son has gained for you. Remember us, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer a sign of that peace now to one another. Think of that peace with Thank you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing our communion hymn number 427, Though the Mountains May Fall. Number 427. moment that you are mine to hold. The plans that heaven has for you will all too soon unfold. So many different prayers I'll pray for all that you might do, but most of all I'll want to know you're walking in the truth. And if I never told you, I want you to know as I watch you grow.
compassion be the wind that leads you through your days. And may conviction keep you strong and guide you on your way. There may be many moments that make your life so sweet. Oh, but more than memories. living if you don't reach for the sky and I'll have tears as you take off but I'll cheer as you fly Announcements. The uh, arrangements for the uh, Mary Schwindemeyer, uh, Schwindemeyer um, funeral have been set. There will not be a visitation or a vigil service tonight at uh, Burmeister at Johansson Funeral Home, but her funeral will be at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning here at St. Michael's Church with a lunch to follow, and then the graveside service will take place at the uh, Portsmouth Cemetery in the afternoon tomorrow. Reminder that this afternoon will be the first of our two Spanish Masses for this month of May. Uh, that will be at 5 o'clock uh, this afternoon here at St. Michael's Church. And there is a correction to the uh, bulletin uh, in regards to the weekday Mass schedule. Uh, there will be a uh, weekday Mass at Elmcrest as usual on the third Tuesday of the month, but the scheduled time is listed as 8.15 is incorrect. It will be the regular normal 9.30 Mass at Elmcrest on Tuesday this week. And speaking of Tuesday, as was mentioned, uh, this week we celebrate the Feast of St. Isidore, patron saint of farmers. We will have a special Mass at 7 o'clock Tuesday night here at the St. Michael's Church. Uh, we encourage you to bring a container that we will fill with holy water that you can use to bless your garden or bless your farm. And there will be fellowship immediately after the uh, Mass in the Rosamond Perry Center. We do ask that you bring goodies that can be shared with those who are in attendance for the special St. Isidore Mass. Our uh, annual diocesan appeal is at 84%. It's kind of hit a roadblock, which isn't unusual. It seems like as we get closer to the end, the uh, number of gifts kind of starts drying up, but we still need a little push here. We're about $8,547 short. Any donation would be greatly appreciated. We do have uh, uh, ADA pledge cards in the back of the church if you've lost or misplaced yours. But with a little extra effort, hopefully we can go over the top by the end of this month. If not, uh, I will send out letters in June to those uh, folks who have given in the past, but for whatever reason have not given yet this year, and also letters to those who have not contributed for whatever reason. But one way or another, we are going to go over the top. I hope we can do it the easy way, but if you want to do it the hard way, we can try that. But we will get over the top one way or another, okay? And thank you to the 184 who have contributed so far to this year's annual diocesan appeal. 
As has been the tradition on Mother's Day weekend, I invite our mothers, if they'll please stand, and we will say a special prayer of blessing upon them on this their special day. stand and pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Black Mass is ended. We go now to proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. Please join us in. 